Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we will be installing Windows Server 2022 on a Hetzner dedicated server. Now this is a very simple thing to do. We just have to run a few commands and this is good if you don't want to buy licenses from them or maybe your organization already had bought volume licenses from them and you just want to use them. So yeah, let's begin. So first of all, we'll need to be on the S2 mode. Next up, we will wget the file. So let's just do this. I already have the links uh, pasted. These will be down in the description. So now we wait for this to install. Okay, now that it's downloaded, next up, quickly uh, change the name of the file so it is something that's more readable to me. I'll just make it win.iso. Now, as you can see, it's win.iso. Next up, we will update our repositories and we will install QEMU. Sorry, package name is QEMU PP. Okay, it's already installed. All right, so now that we have done that, we need to exit out of this and we need to create an SSH tunnel. I'll tell you more what it does once we reach there. Okay, now that we have connected via SSH tunnel, let's create a new VM. Here, this is the new VM. Now, there are a few things we need to change. Since this server has an NVMe, the disk is NVMe 0 and 1. We will, we will only select the first disk available on the server. All right, now if you can't see this part, when you log into the rescue mode, then you can type LSP OK. There, it will show you the disks. The disk path will always be slash dev slash and then whatever is here so you select the first disk and then you can proceed further now what you're gonna do is you have to go to here and uh, this command which will be on in the description here you'll change a few things first cd-rom uh, this will be the name of the iso as uh, i showed you previously the name was uh, bin.iso which I changed from this name. Next up will be your drive. Now drive will be slash dev slash then your first disk. Here it's nv nvme 0 and 1. Next up is the format and next this is the VNC. So these are the only uh, two things you will be changing. This might not look like anything is happening, but actually uh, the VM has already booted. Now, since we made a tunnel, as you can see, we have created a VNC session here and we have tunneled that VNC session to our local host on port 8888. Now what we can do here is we can quickly open VNC and we can launch this. Now once we do, immediately I'm thrown into the Windows Server 2022 installer. I can just click next, install now, and we can install it the default Windows way. If you want to install RAID on it, it can only be done after you install it. Here I will be installing the standard desktop experience. So I'll go with that. I'll accept the terms. Custom. Next. And we're done. We just now have to wait for this to install and the installation part is done.
now that the installation is done we will just restart it and this is not restarting your dedicated server as we can see the dedicated server is still online we have what we have done is we have created a VM we have passed through the drive here our physical drive as the drive for the VM and uh, inside that we have installed Windows what this does is it installs Windows on your main dedicated server and then it should boot normally there's one caveat when we do this we have not configured IP when it's in VM mode which is when we are using a VM to boot into this drive it's not using the same network device that it, that it would when the physical server is booting on this disk the network device will change so what we can do to uh, circumvent this is we can set up a script that automatically configures our IP when the device is booted uh, without the VM mode so here let's just set up Windows really quickly strong password there we go let's just get into the VM Now first of all, let's make sure that we can access the RDP itself. So that means RDP services and firewall is disabled. As you can see, remote desktop is, was disabled. I have enabled it now. By default, the administrator user will have access, so you don't need to worry about that. And the firewall, I'll just turn off as well. Now that that's done, let's go here and let's make our script. Here we will enter this. Uh, depending on how lucky you are with your VNC viewer, you might not be able to uh, copy paste this. So you just have to manually type it, which is fine. It's not very big. I'll just do that now. Now that we have typed it, let's just confirm that everything is same. Now, since I told you this would be a PowerShell script, uh, you know that PowerShell in itself is a scripting language, not a native terminal em emulator. So what this means, we have to care about the syntax. Even if it were a native terminal em emulator, we would still have to uh, worry about syntax. But here, we have to be extra careful. So let's just make sure every uh, spacing is right and we're not making any mistakes. So now that I can see that everything is perfect, let's just save this. Now this in itself is a TXT file. We have to change this to a PS1 file. All we have to do to do that is change the extension to PS1. Yes. Now that that's done, we have our script. 
Next up, we need to ask Windows to check for this file when it's booting. So for that, we can go to Task Scheduler. We can create a basic task. Name it Networking. When the computer starts. We want the script to start when the computer starts. So when whenever this image of uh, Windows is booted, we want it to uh, look for the script. Start a program, that's fine. PowerShell. Next up, we will add the arguments. So here, we can do execution policy. And we will mention the file here. What this does is it tells Power it runs PowerShell.exe, and while running it, it adds these arguments, where we say ex uh, where we mention execution policy, which should be set to bypass, so that it it doesn't ask for anything extra, and then we will mention the file, which is this. As we know, we have set this here script.ps1. This is right under C. Now we will click next and we will tick this box so we have an easier way of uh, configuring this further. Next up, we need to set it so that uh, this runs whether the user is logged in or not because if it doesn't run, then the user won't be able to log in anyways. And we need to make it so that it runs with the highest privileges uh, because this is a networking level setup. Next, it will ask for password. I can put mine. And it's done. If you click on here, then you can see it's ready and it will run at system startup. Another thing you can do is you can run it now. It should say running. And if you go to your networking, Changes off your options, copy these, and here. Then you should see your new and the IP assigned to you by Hetzner. If you don't see it, or if there's some issue, then you need to check for your commands again. Now that we know it's working, we can exit this. You could restart it normally, but also you can just press Control C here, and this will just terminate the uh, session for the terminal. Next up, we will reboot our machine. I'll also set a ping so that I know when my machine is up. Now that our machine is up, we can check for check check if RDP works on it. So I'll just as you can see, RDP is up. And now we have logged in. Next up, we will remove our script. Since the network has already been configured, we, need to, we don't need to configure anything further. So we'll go back to task schedule. And we will delete this task. We will also delete the script since we don't want any unnecessary files on our machine. And that's done. That's Windows Server 2022 installed very easily 
without a license without buying a license from Hetzner this is good for you if you have volume licenses and uh, you want to make quick installs without going to KVM thank you for watching I'll see you in the next video